Thursday. It is Thursday. It's Thursday. And uh, I think we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to yeah. kind of toggle between two. So if you want to you read the first one and I'll sure. do the second one? Sure. That, so. way, that way it'll create a little bit of difference in people's minds. Yeah, so we're going to start off with Isaiah. It's Isaiah 6 in verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. The seraphs were in attendance above him, and each had six wings. With two they covered their face, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now the pivots of the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Here I am, Lord. We've all heard so, that. There we go. So <laughs> we're going to toggle between that one and Romans. Romans 8, 12 to 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For you, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it's that very Spirit bearing witnesses with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may be glorified with him. Paul struggling to use punctuation again, to be sure. Long run on sentences, so, to be yes. sure. <laughs> but what's dramatic is, and, and I want to remind everybody that, that these two readings are coupled together on Holy Trinity Sunday, where we're kind of lifting up the doctrine of God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, one God equal in majesty, not separated by whatever. And, yeah. You know, however you talk about <laughs> it. But, but what's powerful is the separate images we get here. We were talking about this a little bit. Mm. Over in Isaiah, we get this almost throne room, high temple thing with winged creatures. It's almost um, apocalyptic. Yes. Not apoplectic, just for yeah. you playing on but apocalyptic, like like Revelation. Mm -hmm. Almost yep. feels like Revelation. Yep. It sounds like Revelation where you have this whole kind of these these fantastical creatures and, you know, Isaiah's there and he's in fear because the voice of the Lord is making the, the, the pillars and the pivots shake in mm. there. And you have this almost liturgical act of not only singing holy, 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 but also the purification yep. of the lips with the coals mm -hmm. that are taken off of the altar and the response of, and it's almost liturgical, right? The response, yeah. here I am, Lord. As opposed to Romans, where you get language like, you, respe you receive the spirit of adoption. Mm -hmm. When we cry, Abba, Father, when we cry out to our Father, it's the very spirit bearing witnesses in our spirit that we are children of God. And if we're children, then we're heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And I read it differently. It's almost like before and after pictures of how yeah. I did that. Yeah. Or like the before picture where they haven't lost weight. They look all sad and homely. But then afterwards, they're like in some kind of spectacular dress and they're smiling and dazzling. Their makeup was done. I've done it kind of in a, in a before and after kind of thing. But, but just language aside, voice, pivot shake, coal, burn lips, mm -hmm. you know, seraphs, winged creatures versus um, children of God, adoption, heirs. It's all close, isn't it? It's yeah. I, I think I think you couldn't have more different or drastic understandings of God yeah. here. And, and I think and you know, this is something we talked a little bit about off camera. I think 
I think people picture the Isaiah scene when, when they, we go to heaven, right? Yeah, that that's that's what we're going to see when we go through the pearly gates, or um, we we fight off the notion that that is who God is. That God, we're lucky to be in God's presence. We are small creatures compared to God. We're not worthy. Exactly. We're, you know that that's that's who God is for us. And then yet, I think in our real lived experience, in our real Lutheran theology, we go to, to go to Paul. And that's who we are, where Paul just says outright, we are debtors, we are sinners. And because we are people of the flesh, we are people who are, are mortal. And yet God gives us a spirit of adoption, a spirit so that we are born of spirit, so that we can cry, you know, Abba, Father. We're your children, help us. And, and I think that's, it's a real interesting, you know, tension to have between the two of them of what do we think versus what have we experienced. And mm-hmm. I would bet dollars to donuts that most people live in a Roman's world. They live in a Roman's world, but when they look out into the future, it's an Isaiah world. Mm-hmm. They're going to an Isaiah world, mm-hmm. you know. And, and I wonder if there's if there's any way in people's minds, and I really am asking this, hmm. to reconcile the two. To be like, God is the one whose voice can shake the wilderness of Kadesh, as we hear yeah. in our psalm, which we didn't read today, but whose voice can shake that wilderness, but also whose whispers and sighs are too deep for words, or maybe our sighs are too deep for words, but that he dwells in that silence and that peacefulness as well. I feel like I'm going to step into a heresy. (laughs) This is Trinitarian, right? But, But I wonder if, if that's maybe why you, why Jesus steps into the world for us, that if if God was to do what what Jesus comes and does, we wouldn't have any other way to take it other than we are small creatures. Like if if God physically spoke, and we take Isaiah seriously, that God speaks and it you know shakes the pillars of the temple. You know, if God says, I love you, and it's it shakes the pillars of the temple, I might kind of <laughs> distrust the message a little bit, because right. the tone and the message are, are a little bit different. But then when you have Jesus who comes into the world, who, you know, eats with us, who comforts us, consoles us, who ultimately goes to the cross for us, that's a message that I don't think we can really misconstrue. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way in which you don't have to say, you don't have to whitewash who God is. God is the one that calls us in and sends us out, as we see in in the Call of Isaiah story. Um, And he's the one who, who loves and claims as children and adopts and gives good things and says I love you and is present in the the hard and hurt times you know God is both and letting God be that God Mm -hmm. in both cases is is a is a it's a it's a tough dance for us yeah I, I think I think that's just because we're we don't do well with multiple options Mm -hmm. or multiple expressions. We want, you know, a right answer or a wrong answer. We want no choice versus two choices. Or or is it also possible that the reality is, is because of who maybe you are and who I am, this throne room scene is never going to be like that. But, but for but for but for Isaiah, for the people of Israel, who um, need to be called back to God, who aren't in a moment of needing comfort, mm-hmm. 
mm. but who are in the process of needing to be called back to God. In those moments, that's who shows up. The yeah. God who, who calls us back and says, you know, you know, you, yeah. you know. And maybe in for Isaiah and for the people, they they need to hear that God. And maybe for us, most of the time, we need to hear yeah. this God. You know, maybe maybe the God that we need is the God who shows up. Yeah. Which is not to whitewash that God's voice can't shake the the foundations. Yeah. But but it is to say that um When God's voice needs to shake the world out of something to save his children, it'll do that. Yeah, God God meets us where we are. Yeah. How how we need to be met. Yeah. So all right, let us pray. Lord God, as John said, you do meet us where we are. And so come into the world, Lord, and meet us in this powerful time in our nation's history in this powerful time in our individual histories in the things that occupy our anxious hearts and minds the things that we worry about or are facing meet us there Lord and let us know that you are the God whose voice can shake the things of this world so that we might realize our inheritance, our adoption, and most of all, the love that you've shown us in Jesus Christ. Help us to cling to that always, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow. Adios.